G'day guys, M Tim Tam here. Today we're going to learn about the new decompositing feature in Octane version 3. Decompositing was first introduced in Avatar by Weta Digital. Uh, what decompositing is, is that instead of having an RGBA value per pixel, it uses RGBA or multiple RGBA data along with a, a Z front and a Z back data, which means it saves all depth data where that pixel is in the image based on the uh, lighting and whatnot. Uh, the specifics for it is called Z back or Z. It was uh, used on a scene that's what a digital posted in uh, Return of the Planet of the Apes, where they showed a demonstration on utilizing this depth um, data, and uh, it's a whole lot more easier using conventional methods. Um, being restricted to only RGBA data. So how do we do this within Octane? Well, I have a quick scene that I uh, chucked together um, involving three cars being spaced between it along with um, this 3D scan model of me, Royal Adelaide Show. Best $30 I've ever spent. Jesus. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I have two of them in the far end and the uh, front here, just to really give a sense on what's happening at the moment. Now there's two ways to do this. There is rendering a whole image or rendering out multiple deep image versions, uh, just so you can lay it better. Because if you want to do any compositing, you obviously need your own object pass, your own light render layer, your own Shadow, spec, glossy, reflection, refraction, GI, indirect lighting, all that jazz. So, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to uh, render out a full image and only one um, element, which is the exact same process, but I'll show you it anyway. So, how do you access deep compositing within Octane version 3? Well, first of all, it only works within par tracing and direct lighting. It doesn't work in PMC yet, since PMC is MLT on steroids. So, uh, in this example, I'll be using path tracing since it's running quite well in path tracing. Um, in the render kernel section, you'll see deep image. In order uh, to access it, you click check button. Now, as you notice, the uh, moment you click deep image, your VRAM usage bumps up quite a lot. So here it is without it on, and here it is with it on. The reason for this is that your computer is now storing every single depth data for each pixel here. And this can obviously put a lot of strain on the GPU memory. So keep that in mind. So what options do we have here? We have the max depth samples and the depth tolerance. The max depth samples is pretty much the amount of samples you want stored for each pixel. Obviously, if you put the high, uh, number higher, the more VRAM will be taken. But at the same time, you have a lot more data to play with. There's also the depth tolerance, uh, which is the merging of two depth samples. If uh, they're together, will they be merged or not? Obviously, the higher it is, the more tolerance you'll get with it. Let's just leave that to default for now. So, um, let that uh, munch through. I'm just going to put that up to about 200. Actually, I'll put that to about 400. Okay, so now that you have your render finished, to save the deep image, you have to go to the render, uh, save render option. And instead of going to the normal EXR, you have to go to EXR deep image. From there, you can put in your deep 
image. Now, um, let's just say you want to do a quick uh, compositing of uh, the front image. Um, it's pretty much the exact same process where you grab your object layer, your object, assign it to its own render option um, as such. So go to the rendering, enable, I just want number one to show up with its car. Exact same process, you save it out as a deep image once it's finished rendering and you assign it to your okay this is the table pass, this is the uh, chair pass, so on and so forth. The exact same process. It all works out the same. So now that you have your deep render images you need Nuke to access it. Here I have a quick example of the different scenes split together. However, I'm going to start with the whole scene first. Get the deep read. You can't use conventional deep uh, a read a read node because it won't access it properly. As you can see, it comes in in a blue node with the deep option accessible. And from here you can see all of our data and deep data present. If you go to the deep and within the Z depth you can see all of the pixels on its depth. So let's go back to the color. Now um, before we start let's see how this looks like within 3D. Let's see what we can access. We're going to go to tab deep to points. We're going to connect the deep to the deep EXR image. And we're going to go to tab camera to get a 3D camera. Once there, look onto the deep to points. And here you will see all of the information that Octane Render has rendered out. Um, so here is all the depth information that you can access. Um, and here is a few examples of it. So if we keep that open. Okay, so let's just say that I wanted, let's just say I was like some picky producer and I'll be like, you know what? Uh, I don't want the guy in the back and I don't want the guy in the front. And instead of being like, oh, right now I have to re-render this. Or you can be like, well, before I go to that effort, let's see if he actually likes what he wants. So in order to do that, we're going to get a deep crop, highlight the selection area. We're going to find out where our points are kept. Top is 1600 and the back is around 13. So the guy says, all right, so I don't want the guy in the front and the back. So what you do is simply just get rid of that lump, get rid of him like that and get rid of the guy. Obviously the data, you can't see the rendering image behind the guy, but you say to the, the guy, all right, well, that's how it's going to look like. Just imagine the purple cars there. And he'll be like, yep, yep, uh, yeah, that, that, looks, that looks good. Um, yeah, keep on up, go with that instead. A more better example is if everything's in its own separate and you will got rid of the guy like this. They go have been like, yep, that looks better. Yeah, keep him out. Keep that actor out. And the same with the other guy. Uh, the, the, the car's both in the same depth, but you get the gist of it. Um, that's in the separate render layers. Um, and without wasting money and time rendering out, getting the guy out, re-rendering, re-lighting, re-compositing it, all you have to do is just get two nodes punch a few values and the whole entire pixels are erased. Um, this deep image rendering is very, very helpful. And not only that, in this example here, I've set up a quick um, uh, holdout and by holdout a very, very bad made person. Um, and I've put it to a 3D card, put it into the 3D scene, convert it to a deep image, and made a holdout 
which I can manipulate. So as you can see, there's the car, and it's like, I want this really bad made drawn person. Um, I want it to be behind the red car. So you move the car behind the red, move him down, and as you can see, he is already there. Didn't make, I didn't have to make any stencil or any roto mask for the car. I didn't have to get the node tree set up for that. All I had to do was make a quick roto shape, punch in a card, throw into the scene, place it at the right depth, and it's already done. So, um, I hope you like this tutorial on how to access deep and render out deep images. Hopefully you can find it of use. I know Weta has, along with many other visual effects studios out there. Um, there's very little video tutorials on deep um, image compositing. Once I grab my head around it, it's more in terms of uh, more than just holdout masks. I might make my own tutorial for deep image compositing, uh, utilizing Octane Render, but more specifically for deep image compositing, since this is just amazing. Amazing. All from a 2D image. Wow. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.